just there. But I get all the same money. It's the last way. One, two. Orlando, there's a huge buzz in that monitor. The drum monitor, there's a buzz, a loud buzz.
Good morning, church. Oh, you guys are too quiet for me. Good morning, church. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. No matter what we're going through, God is still on the throne. Can we remember to stand in his presence this morning and give God some praise? I'm going to stop this morning with a little... Father God. Lord, we come before you, Lord, to give you thanks and praise first, God, to say thank you for all you've done and all you've given us, oh God. Father God, there's so much going on today in our lives, God. There's anxiety, there's stress, there's running here and there, Father God. Try to make ends meet, oh Lord, but we know that you, Lord, are our provision and our provider, oh God. Father, without you, Lord, we are nothing. Father, this morning we ask that you pour out your spirit this morning, but we ask that in, the, in your time, God, that as you pour out, Father God, that we look up to the master this morning and we give you glory on and praise because of who you are, God. And that we don't forget, Father God, no matter what, Lord, that we are grateful to be here, that you've you chosen us, Father. We have not chosen you this morning, God. So, God, we come before you, Lord, to give you what's due your name as honor, glory, and praise. And we ask it in Jesus' holy name, we pray. Amen.
Jesus Christ this morning. In case you don't understand, sometimes we, we come into his presence and we give him so little when we have so much to be thankful for. So this morning when we say, I could think of your love forever, we need, to, we need to mean it this morning. I could think of your love forever and ever and ever. That's how long he's going to love me, forever and ever and ever. So this next song says, Oh Lord my God, when I in awe wonder, consider all, all that thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul. So this morning I want to hear you sing from your soul this morning. With mask or not, we can still sing and praise God, correct? So let's sing this morning in a great voice together in one accord. Amen.
find all you need this morning at the cross this morning. All we need is at the cross this morning. Hallelujah.
of God. Wherever we are, that should be an altar for us to kneel and pray and asking for God's direction. This has been a very special day for me today. Uh, before I come here, uh, Trevor and Jofa Gandhi said I could preach um, about anxiety to live, bring all our anxiety in God's presence. Uh, I'm sharing this only uh, to let you know that all of us there are, we have those days. Mine started yesterday. This night, unfortunately, I could not sleep, have a good time of sleep. I was waking up many times. But before that, I was uh, trying to send my sermon to my iPad. Uh, I use my iPad with everything, the sermon, all the also the manual we have the communion today and I realized that I had a problem uh, I, s I had that problem before but yesterday night I saw that something was really bad and I said uh, everything is done tomorrow I can come to the church and all open and have the, the, the sermon during the night Sarah Lara uh, wake up a couple times and when was uh, before seven o'clock, I wake up and I was feeling a little bit tired. I said, but I have things to do. I was preparing and uh, I went to grab my computer and I realized that that was not something easy because as I touch one word, like I was able to bring all the words together. It was like a clue. And I said, now I'm going to church. Pastor Lan will be here. Uh, there are some things that we need to do uh, before and after I will check that. When I was in the office trying to do that, I realized that all my sermons simply disappeared. Joe said, they are in some place in your computer. Uh, that happened during the Portuguese speaking service. I used my Bible. I said, in Portuguese, I feel more comfortable. But English is something different. I need to make sure I had 45 minutes to uh, solve that problem. But when I went to grab my iPad, I don't know where I left my iPad. Now I have the problem with my iPad and also with my computer. Uh, I have some people here trying to help me. 
And I said, I need to find the, 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 the scripture. I sent that to Pastor Orlando. But after I realized that I don't know where is my font to. Well, a lot of things happen in one day. No computer was not working. The phone, uh, the iPad disappeared. And now I don't know where I left my phone. It's, it's here in some place. Don't worry about that. We will see, find that at the end of the service. But to let you know that sometimes in our lives there are things that can make us like to feel our life is upside down. But in those moments, the Word of God tells us, do not be anxious for anything. But in everything, bring your request to God. All of us. Last week, someone was we're talking with, with us as a teacher about starting the school. She had some concerns. We are living in the world that there is a lot of concerns. But my brothers and sisters, there is an answer. Come to the altar. Be in the presence of God. God can do great things, impossible things, if we trust Him. The peace of mind that exceeds all under our understanding will keep our mind in Christ Jesus. And today as I'm going to preach, I'm going to use my Bible and also the, my hymnal. Long time I, not the hymnal, the, the uh, church manual. Long time I didn't have my manual here. Everything was in my iPad. But more than to have a iPad here or a manual, we need to have the presence of the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit. We need His guidance, His direction. Let us pray for God's church. Pray for my family. Pray for Lara. But let us pray for one another. You know, uh, because God can answer our prayer. Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank you, Lord, because we know that our lives is in your hands. Nothing is impossible for you. There are moments that our faith is tested. In those moments, Father, we are not called to be afraid, but to trust. We have been listening about trusting you. We preach about it. But it is in such time like this that we are called to show that we trust you. I pray, Lord, for my family. I pray for Sarah and Lara, especially Lara. I pray, Lord, for your direction. But I pray for my church family too. All of us here, in some level, have been facing a tough time. Those days are evil. These days are evil, but we trust you. The thing that we as a church need the most is the presence of your Holy Spirit. God guide us, help us to continue to trust you. I pray for my brothers and sisters, and especially, Father, my prayers for those, for the elders of the church. Those that more, more than four months are not able to come to church. But I know that they have the presence of your Holy Spirit, Jesus. May you be with them. Those who need a special touch from you, touch them in a mighty way. I heard about how Sister Philomena that has had a surgery. She's been home. It's so good to know that you will continue to touch her body, to give her strength, and to help her. This morning, a mother shared her concern about her son who got the virus. I pray, Lord, again for your healing touch. I pray, Lord, for uh, this country when things is upside down when everything looks like they are out of the place it is so good to know that our God is still sitting on the throne and we can trust him I praise your name father because we trust you and to come here to worship your name to praise you is because we trust you we are not afraid because our tomorrow, because our tomorrow belongs to you. In this present, with iPad or without iPad, I have the presence of your Holy Spirit. 
we have your presence among us. You are talking to us. I thank you, Lord, for my brothers and sisters. I thank you for David. I thank you for Joe Fagandes, for Pastor Orlando, for Zezia, who is not, not here today. I thank you for all our musicians, the worship leaders, those who work at the sound system. Thank you for Kathy, who are willing to help when many people are not here today. Father, we keep trusting you. Everything is for you. It's to bring honor and glory to the name of Jesus. We praise his holy name. Hallelujah. We lift up his name in this church. Oh, Jesus, help us in everything to praise you, to honor you, and to continue to trust you. Oh, God, continue to take care of your church financially. Different areas that we need you to continue to help us. We thank you for those who have been faithful to you. We thank you, Lord, for those who, even though they are not living here in New Bedford anymore, they are sending their tithes, your tithes, and supporting your church. Father, we thank you because we know that the church doesn't belong to the pastors or to the board. It belongs to Jesus. And those who are continuing to support your church, they are doing that because of Jesus. Help us to be faithful, to continue to love you with all our hearts, with all our strength, and to trust you if you say something to us, help us, Lord, to say yes to your will and to your way. As Pastor shared with me yesterday, that Jeanette felt in her heart to, that you were talking to her to sing something different. Use her in a mighty way to bless our hearts. Use us, Father, to make a difference in our generation. Those who came to the altar, answer their prayers according to your will. Those who are kneel in your presence, touch and answer their prayers. We need you. We love you. Our lives is in your hands. And we pray, Lord, may your will be done always, always. I pray asking all these blessings, all these blessings. God, in the precious name of the one who came and died on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins, who rose again and is sitting in the throne in the heaven. And one day he will come to judge the living and the dead. But more than that, to bring his church to be with him. Help us to continue to be faithful and to continue to love you with all our heart, with all our strength. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Amen. Oh, come to the altar the Father's arms are open wide, forgiveness of heart with the precious blood of Jesus Christ.
This has been a week for things not going as planned, hasn't it? <laughs> but you got God's in control. We had a prayer this morning with Pastor that um, his no words would be anointed. And uh, sometimes he has a different plan than what we have, and that's okay. If there's anything I'm learning with the first week of school, the, te the teachers went back last week, and um, it was overwhelming listen, looking at the schedule and how this is going to work, and my head was swirling um, thinking about it. And how is this ever going to work? And um, I, I trust it will. And one of the teachers, um, it's, it's good to know, it's reassuring to know that there's others who are believing like-minded uh, she said, Suffi you know, don't worry about what today will bring. Sufficient enough for today is its own worries. God will take care of it. And I said, Stephanie, that's from the Bible. <laughs> and uh, she goes, yeah, I know. I'm like, I know I heard that before, but he's in control. <laughs>
So make me a vessel, make me an offering, make me whatever you want me to be. For I came here with nothing, but all you have given me, Jesus, make new wine out of me. Jesus, make new wine out of me. Jesus, make new wine out of me. Make me a vessel, new wine. Yeah, everything is, can be new. Sometimes you plan your, what you are going to say, or, but God said, I have something new, brand new to say. And um, you only need to trust me. Let's stand and open our Bibles in the book of... John chapter 12, verses 32 and 33. Usually I, in my iPad I have the big words those the, from the Bible, they are small. And I think without the glass I can see better. Amen? John chapter 12, verse 32 and 33. The Word of God says, And I... If I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all peoples to myself. This he said, signif signifying what that he would die. And I, if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all peoples to myself. This Jesus said, signifying by what that he would die. Father, we praise you for the opportunity that you give us to preach your word. Use me as a vessel and bless your people. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Really, the life of Jesus didn't make a huge impact in people's life. The world didn't continue to be what it was before. What Jesus did touched people's life. And even today we can hear about what he did through the Bible. We have people testifying about what Jesus did and a miracle that Jesus performed in their lives. And all of us who are here, we can testify about a miracle that happened to all of us here. It's a miracle of bringing us back to life, a new life in Christ. Because the Word of God says that we were dead in our sins and transgressions. But because of our decisions to accept Jesus as our personal Savior, lives, our lives changed. We come here not because we used to, but because we are called to worship the one who came to die on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. And as we come together, we also enjoy the presence of one another. We are here to encourage one another. 
in difficult times, even before we start the service, to have someone saying, Pastor, don't worry, do not be anxious. Words that Jesus taught to his disciples that even today we can share with one another. Yes, my brothers and sisters, did Jesus impact the world? He changed people's life. Those who were living out of the society, those who, because of what happened in their lives, could not be in the presence of other people. Jesus showed up and changed their lives. We can think about those ten lepers. The law of Moses said that they could not be in the presence of others. Because in those days, leper was a disease that could uh, rapidly be, was a contagious disease. And, and these people were told to live far from the city. And the word of God. Amen. With his power, he has saved me. Praise the Lord of God. Yeah, it was the power of Jesus, really, that... Touch people's hearts, you know. And those ten lepers, when Jesus, they approached Jesus, what Jesus said to them? Go show yourself to the priest. And as they left Jesus' presence, the power of God manifested in their lives and they were completely cleansed. Yes, they were outcasts. They lived far from the, away from the society. But God gave them, through Jesus, an opportunity to be with their loved ones again. We know about this woman who for 12 years had a problem. She could not be in the society. She could not go to the temple worship the Lord. Because she was considered by the law unclean. She had a problem, a bleeding problem. And the word of God says, one day when Jesus was going with Jairus to his house, Jesus, this lady was with the multitude. And what she said, if I could touch him, I can be healed. And she went in her faith and touched Jesus' coat. And she was healed. What Jesus said? Who touched me? And the multitude said, Jesus, you, why you are you asking this question? And Jesus said, because the song came good in good time. Power came up from me. This lady's life was changed. And she went back to, to the society. My brothers and sisters, also, we heard about a man that for many years lived in the cemetery. He could not be with people. They were trying to put him in chains, but he was able to broke all the chains. And people were afraid. And one day Jesus had this encounter with this man. And Jesus asked him, what's your name? He said, Legion, because we are many. I have many spirits and they are tormenting me. And Jesus ordained those spirits to leave the man. Now this man is sitting in perfect state of mind. People came and they were surprised. But my brothers and sisters, we can think all these miracles. But when you stop, you think about that widow who lost her son. When you stop and you think about Martha and Mary who lost their brother. When you stop and you think about Jairus who lost her daughter, his daughter. And you think all these people that got, that were going through a very difficult time in their lives without hope. But Jesus came and Jesus perform a great miracle in their lives. Now all the other miracles can seem insignificant. But one thing all of us know, that none of them we could perform 
only Jesus. Only Jesus. And because of all the news about Jesus, who was a man who showed care for people, Jesus was someone else who would attract the multitudes. And they want to be in his presence. They want to listen what Jesus had to say because his words was full of wisdom and power. And the word of God says that man stood with him until they realized that it was too late. And Jesus turned to his disciples and Jesus said to the disciples, give them something to eat. And they said, Lord, like I said years before, we don't have market basket or stop and shop here to feed all these people. There is a boy who has some fishes and bread and he presents them to the disciples. And that reminds us with few, even though when we have few with God, that can be many. Bring your insignificant thing to God's presence and he is able to perform a great miracle. And that day, all the multitude of people, they ate and there was left over. My brothers and sisters, I, I don't know if those Greeks who came to see Jesus knew about all the, these miracles. I really don't know. But the word of God said there is a group of Greeks that came to the celebration of Passover in Israel. And when they were there, they maybe saw uh, one of Jesus' disciples, Philip. And they said, Philip, we want to see Jesus. We want to see Jesus. Philip ran to talk with Jesus. Say, there is some Greeks that want to talk to you. And the word of God says that like Jesus didn't care. Because at that moment, Jesus started to talk about himself and the kind of death he would die. And Jesus gave the disciples all the explanation. And he comes to the point and he said, And when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to you. And I, if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. Yes, those disciples, Philip talked with the Greeks, and it, like, it looked like Jesus didn't care, but Jesus started to talk and said, you know, when I've been lifted up, pointing to the cross, I will draw all people included the Jewish, the, the Greeks who are here, those who were not considered the chosen ones, because only the Jewish people, maybe this group of people were called the proselytes of uh, Judas, the Jewish pro proselytes. They followed the law of Moses. That's why they were in Jerusalem. And, and the word of God says that, they said, I want to see Jesus. And Jesus now talking to his disciples, point to the cross. I will draw all people to me, including the Jews, the Gentiles, who are the Greeks. But not only this, this message is very important, because at this moment, Jesus started to talk about himself. He is not talking about Pastor Montero, Pastor Orlando. He's not saying, oh, Pastor Monteo, Pastor Orlando will do something great in the church. He's not saying, you know, if you hide Pastor Orlando, something will happen. You are going to have a funny English. No, no, he's not saying that something extraordinary would happen with Pastor Orlando. We are living in days that sometimes people talk a lot about pastor. Come to my church. Oh, that pastor is a good pastor. You, the youth, they love him. Did you hear about this? Oh, come to see my pastor. My brothers and sisters, when Jesus was on earth, the word of God tells us that John the Baptist, he had his disciples. And they came to him questioning about Jesus. And what John said, it is very important for me to decrease and for Jesus to increase. 
It's all about Jesus in the church of, of God. Everything that we need to, to, to share with people, it's about Jesus. It's not about myself. Because what Jesus was said, when I've been lifted up, I will draw all men to me. And we need to point Jesus, my brothers, to many who do not know salvation, about the salvation of their souls. And it is very interesting that now Jesus not, is not saying, I will drill all the Jewish. Because many of them rejected Jesus Christ. But the message is, I will draw everybody. To those who have accepted Jesus, God give them the power to become children of God. And it is very important for us to understand this message because this message is not for a specific group of people, but it's for everybody because the Word of God says in John 3.16, For God so loved the world. He loved me and you. It doesn't matter who you are, where you come from. God loves you and to prove, to prove his love, he came he sent his son Jesus Christ to come to die on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. My brothers and sisters, what Jesus said, when I've been lifted up, I will draw all people. How? Through the manifestation of the love of God. You know why? Because when Jesus said all people, he's talking about those who rejected him, those who will run from his presence, all people, included me and you. It's not about only those who are doing things right. At the cross, a criminal was put to death. But he turned to Jesus and he said, Jesus, remember me. And what, when you enter into your kingdom, what Jesus said today, you'll be with me in paradise. My brothers and sisters, Jesus came and died on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. And now, like I said to you in those three weeks ago, that Jesus is the only way to the Father. Jesus is the, only, is the true and Jesus is the life. The only way for us to be in the presence of God is through Jesus, His Son, Jesus. And as a church of God, we preach about the power. There is power in the message about Christ crucified. Because it's only through Jesus Christ who died for me and for you that man can be saved. Are you saved? Are you? I will draw all men unto me. The word of God says there are those who reject him. Was those that Jesus died for. He died for them. The message for us today, because I'm in the midst of brothers and sisters who know Jesus Christ, the message is what are you doing to bring this message to those who are far from God's presence, to point them to Jesus? Like John Baptist said, he is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Pointing to Jesus who would be lifted up and die on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. What is our responsibility today, church? And you can ask me, Pastor, what can we do? We cannot be outside doing evangelism? Yes, you can. There is many different ways for us to do that. But we need to continue to live a life that shows, us, shows people that we are new in Christ because of what Jesus did for us. And most important, I spoke about all these people who were brought into society. You know, where I spoke about the, the lepers, I spoke about those who died, I spoke about those who were sick. But my brothers and sisters, we need to understand that as a church of God, we are brought together through what Jesus did on the cross to be part of the 
kingdom of God. You are part of the kingdom of God. And this is something great because the kingdom of God is in you. You carry this kingdom in with, with you. As you go, as you share, you'll be with someone else. You are there to represent Jesus. And like Paul said, we are Christ's ambassadors. We accept Jesus. Now we share Jesus. Why? Because the message is for everybody. I will attract all people unto me. Pastor, I see some people, but I do not believe that they can be changed. That's not your problem. Who changes is Jesus. Sometimes we are afraid to go out and preach the message and share the message because we are afraid if the person will ignore us. It is not our responsibility. Our responsibility is only to go and share it and live with the Lord. And sometimes as a church and Christian, we do not go because we are afraid. That person is not going to pay attention into the message. In the Old Testament, the Word of God talks, talks about the day that Isaiah saw the Lord. And the word of God says, when he was purified, God said to him, who shall, shall I send? You know? And he said, send me. And after, there is this question, where should I go? And God said, I'm going to send you to a group of people, to a nation, to the people, and they are not going to pay attention in what, what you are going to say. In other words, I'm going to send you to a place and it looks like that you are going to be defeated because nobody is going to pay attention in your message. That was a message in chapter 6 of Isaiah that God said to the prophet, go there, I will send you. But they are not going to pay their attention in what you are going to say. And today God is sending us because we know about the message of Jesus Christ who died on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. And we know that people only can be saved through Jesus Christ. But Jesus said, I'm sending you. Go, go church, go. Of course we need power. But power is not something that is only was given to the disciples in the past. The power came with the Holy Spirit. And the word of God says, and you receive power and you will become my witness in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the very end of the earth. You are going to be my witness here in New Bedford and I'm going to use you. Amen, church? I know that great things will happen here at the International Church of Nazarene. I know that, church. And we'll see God working. Maybe eight years, when I got here, I became a pastor. Seven years. I was here sitting, and you know the story. And God gave me a vision of this church full of people. You know, people who have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. And the question is, how people are going to come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ? You can say, oh, pastor, you are the pastor. No, the message is for all of us. All of us are called to go and to bring people to Jesus. With what message? The message about Jesus Christ, who will draw all people to himself. And we are called to do our part. Amen, church? And I pray that God will use you. My message was going in another direction before, you know. But God led me in this direction. And I pray that God will continue to use us in the midst of this COVID-19. Let us do more. Let us pray. Let us God's presence. And by the way, this Tuesday, we are going to have prayer meeting in the church. Okay? We are going to have prayer meeting at 7 p.m. in our fellowship um, hall. We have enough space. You know, we can have chairs 
they're all uh, like we, when we do have board meeting, but I feel in my heart that we can come for prayer. And it is safe, okay? It's very safe. You know, I, I don't see other places here in New Bedford that are more safe than here. Of course, we have the presence of God, but we try to also do what the government is, government is saying, what the city is saying, and we are going to make sure that as you come to the prayer meeting, you also are going to be able to uh, be safe. Also, we will continue with Zoom. I'm going to make sure that we can uh, have Zoom Tuesday, but the prayer meeting will be in the church. We are going to use the back door, and we are going to live with those two uh, side door uh, in the basement, okay? If you are coming, 7 o'clock, come through the uh, side door, side door, the ramp, and we are going to have prayer meeting together. I do believe it's something really important. I'm, I'm starting to talk, think about Bible study. Maybe we are going to use the same area. We are not opening the chapel yet. Uh, we will give more time, but in our fellowship hall, there is plenty of space for us to keep the distance and also uh, by wearing our mask, we can have our time uh, of prayer. Amen, church? But today is a very special day. Once a month, we have communion. Uh, we are going to sing the song, Let Us Break Bread Together uh, on our knees. And uh, I'm going to ask uh, the worship team if they can help me. He is Lord, He is Lord. It's a song that everybody knows. I don't think so if we have the song. Let us break uh, bread together on the screen. Today, those people who used to help us with the projection are not here. But I know that you know the song, He is Lord by heart. Uh, and you can't uh, sing with us. Amen. When you came into the church, there is a communion cups in the entrance. If you don't have yours, go and take one. Uh, we are going to have uh, our time for communion now. We can sing a cappella. He is Lord. He is Lord. He is risen from the dead. And He is Lord. Supper, instituted by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is a sacrament which proclaims his life, his suffering, his sacrificial death and resurrection, and the hope of his coming again. It shows forth the Lord's death until his return. The supper is a means of grace in which Christ is present by the Spirit, it is to be received in reverent appreciation and gratefulness for the work of Christ. All those who are truly repentant, forsaking their sins and believing in Christ for salvation, are invited to participate in the death and resurrection of Christ. 
we come to the table that we may be renewed in the life and salvation and be made one by the Spirit. In unity with the church, we confess our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so we pray. Holy God, we gathered at this, your table, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who by your Spirit was anointed to preach good news to the poor, proclaim release to the captives, set at liberty those who are oppressed. Christ healed the sick, fed the hungry, ate with sinners, and established the new covenant for the forgiveness of sins. We believe in the hope of his coming again. On the night in which he was betrayed, he took the bread, gave thanks, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples and said, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, when the supper was over, he took the cup and gave thanks, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood from the covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so we gathered as the body of Christ to offer ourselves to you in praise and thanksgiving. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on this your gifts. Make them by the power of your Spirit to be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood, by your spirit. Make us one in Christ, one with each other, and one in the ministry of Christ to all the world until Christ comes in final victory. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught to his disciples. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day a daily bread and forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And leave us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, broken for you, preserve you blameless unto everlasting life. Eat this in remembrance that Christ died for you, and be thankful. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, shed for you, preserve you blameless unto everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ died for you, and be thankful. Amen. Amen. His Lord. His Thank you, my brothers and sisters. Only uh, I would like to let you know that next Sunday, from two, 12 to 2 uh, p.m., 
there is fish and chip uh, dinner at the Smith Mills camp, and uh, you are uh, invited to go and to join, and they have takeout, only take, takeout, $10, uh, I think is the price. You are uh, invited to go and have your fish and chips, uh, and also is an opportunity to show support to the camp. May God bless you and may God continue to take care of all of us. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And God's people say, Amen. Amen. God bless you and have a blessed day in his presence.